<clears throat> Brown Risings, hope you're having a blessed day. Um, today, I'm going to show you how to make your own smudge sticks. Um, and for anybody that don't, doesn't know what a smudge stick is, like, you know, it's like a, a collection of herbs that, you know, do different things. Um, dried in a bunch and you burn it and, and you, you clean your, your space, you cleanse your space with it basically. Um, you can use sage, you can use rosemary, you can, most people use sage, but actually you can use any herb, you can use pretty much any herb, you can use, and they all do different things. So sage is for cleansing, rosemary is for protection. Um, oregano is a very beautiful one to use if you, if you make a smudge stick. That's for happiness, actually. Not a lot of people know that one. Oregano, if you do an oregano smudge stick, it's for happiness. And good for new homes, new homes and spaces. Um, you could use lavender. Yeah, I'm sure you can search engine that one yourself and, and figure out which ones you want to use. Um, but they can be quite expensive, especially sage ones or what i'm using today my favorite mugwort ah, ah, ah. um yeah they can they can be quite expensive actually so if you don't have the funds for smudge sticks you know all this spiritual hoodoo doesn't have to be for the for the rich <laughs> doesn't have to be for people with money um so yeah, there are many ways we can do these things on a budget and so yesterday <clears throat> i went out i had such an amazing day yesterday I made a, an amazing, like, gratitude video of, of, like, just my dawning and all the things that that I see and observe that make my heart sing and make me grateful. And I made a little video. I haven't edited it properly yet, but this this was one of the things I did. I went out to forage some mugwort, specifically for a video um, to show you how to do these smudge sticks. Amazing, right? And um, so I went out and foraged this yesterday. And I did actually get, hang on a second, I did get um, one. Because normally I wouldn't take off the top. I wouldn't take it off like this. This is the top of one of the plants. And if you can see, normally I would just cut sort of about the top third. I try not to take more than a third from one plant. If even that, I would probably make maybe a quarter. Um... But this is the top, and I only took the top of this one to demonstrate what I would do. Um, I would take the individual stems off. If you see, I would get my little clippers, my little clippers, and I would just cut these off, and I'd leave sort of the top stem and all the bottom big bits coming off, and leave the plant to do its thing, like have its seed, and you know, let the bugs do their thing. Um, so yeah, normally I wouldn't, but for the purposes of the video. You just need to have the top stem. There's an apple falling. <laughs> um, and cut off the big ones. Like the further down the stem gets, the bigger they get coming off. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, smudge sticks. What you will need is a collection of, of, of stems of your, your required herb. Today, it's mugwort. Some scissors, or some clippers, and some kind of... I like to use embroidery thread. Um... I don't know why. It just feels nicer. It, it works better. You can use so many different colours as well. So, um, depending on, I suppose, what 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 your intention is behind the smudge stick, what you would like to use the smudge stick for. Um, it depends on the colour that you can use, I suppose. I've used this nice indigo colour because mugwort is used for divination, um, for intuition. If you want to do any kind of like lucid dreaming or um, connect with your third eye, really connect with your own your own internal intuition. We all have it. You don't, you know, we're not. It's not something that people are gifted with. It's just that some people have learned to be a bit more in tune with it. I think we all have intuition. We all know when something's not quite right. We all know when you know something is amiss. And we're quite often, I think, told to ignore that. And actually, you can hone that inner internal guidance. I think um, I watched an amazing video a few years ago. I think, like, forgive me if I've gotten the wrong country, but I think it was, like, Swedish, like, or 
you know, Netherlandsy type places. And their word for it, from what I remember, was called Insaye. Insaye. And I'll try and link, I'll try and find the video and link it in the comments. But it's basically this like cool documentary about our our intuition, our internal guidance that is quite often covered up in modern society, you know, with so many different things, like we bombard our senses with so many different things that are external to ourselves, that, you know, our gut, our gut, when we don't listen to our gut, you know, and we, we brush it off, and actually we need to start listening to that so much more. Um, but it's a cool video, like, please, please check it out. Um, it's pretty cool. Anyway, back. I'm, go I'm probably going to digress and get distracted throughout this video many, many times. So I am using indigo for, if you're not aware, chakras. Indigo goes for, like, you know, third eye. So I thought that would be pretty cool to use with the mugwort. And so get, like, one good thick stem. I suppose I could use this one, really, if I was to make a big beastie one. You can make little ones, you can make big ones. I like to make big ones because they look more ceremonial. I would say, um, yeah, I would say they look more ceremonial. So I'm going to make a big one to start with. Um, and then I'll show you how to make, you know, then apply it to a small one, maybe. Um, literally just start with one. And then you start building up. Um, I'm hoping you can see. I can't see a thing. The sun is blinding today. It's a beautiful day. Um and that's quite a big one as well, actually, isn't it? So I would start with a nice good base of like maybe, you know, three, four good solid, good solid, you know, um, stems, branches, sticks, bits, arms, whatever you want to call them. I'm sure there's a technical term for them, but the plant doesn't really care what the words you use are. Um, and then as you get like these smaller ones, Sort of just working down because this is when it dries, it's gonna it's gonna shrink quite a little. Um, let's try some more coffee. Mm. And um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna shrink. So you want it quite beefy, really beastie, big, bulky. All the they're all very B words, aren't they? <laughs> B words, big bees. Um, yeah, and you literally just just keep layering it. It's, it's so easy, it's so easy. I'm probably going to cut the layering of this unless I say something really interesting while I'm layering, which I probably you know, will. Keep layering it. Keep going down, moving down, and um, because the stems obviously get thinner as you go. I like to use the leaves in there as well, but I do like to have the flowers in. The smudge stick with mugwort. I wish you could smell through through the camera because mugwort it's like a slight mentally I think it is part might be part of like the sagey sort of mentally family, I'm not sure, but it does have a slight mentally undertone. Overtone? Undertone. You sniff it, you decide. Um, it's oh, so easy. You just keep layering it. Have it how you want it. There is no right way to make a smudge stick other than you bunch them together, you tie them up, and then you hang them up to dry. It's that fucking simple. Um, it's that simple. It's a nice way to connect with the plant, really, to get a feel for how the, the, the flowers and the leaves sit when they're all bunched together. Um... Joined by the crows. Nice. Thank you. Blessed. My mugwort stick is blessed by the crows. Wah, ha, ha, ha. Yes, by the Morrigan. <laughs> so for anyone that hasn't seen my other um, foraging video, I did a little video about the collecting and um, how I went out scouting, basically, for mugwort. I went out scouting before I went to harvest because... It saves time, you know, if you're on a little walk, like just taking notes of where the plants are for when, when they're ready to be foraged. Um, harvested, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
you want to make sure you've got a good like sticks at the bottom and quite hard so you've got like a handle a good handle to do your thing um hmm. so that's getting quite fat in the middle really so could do with just putting some smaller ones if i've got some smaller ones i might need to cut off of this one now bottom just to make the bottom just as flowery if you see I'm just layering it now so the sticks are smaller but they're getting um it's getting quite bare on the flower front here <laughs> so if I use the smaller the smaller ones and just put the top of that flower here it it means that the flowers are even all the way through the stick um that's a little thing going on so um, yeah, so I'll link the other video in as well when I went out like having a little scout for the mugwort. But if you haven't seen it and you don't wish to see it, that's fine. I will recap. Mugwort, like, I would say it's probably... Yeah, it's my favourite plant. It's my favourite plant. It's definitely um, supported me in many ways, has mugwort. Um, its Latin name is um, Artemisia vulgaris. And so I recently learned from a, a very cool gardener woman um, that the term vulgaris, I always assumed that it meant like sort of common because, you know, vulgar, the word vulgar, the term vulgar. But apparently she's, this woman that I met um, recently said that if a, if a plant has got the term, the Latin word vulgaris in it, it means that it actually has healing properties. Didn't know that, so that's quite cool. And obviously Artemisa, um, the goddess Artemis, um, this was this plant is associated with her, and I shall tell you why. So Artemis is goddess of the moon and the hunt, and she's also goddess of midwives and the womb intuition, because you know our intuition is linked to our sacral chakra and to the womb, you know, women's intuition, it, it's, you know, I don't mean to divide any, you know, women out there that, that are without a womb for whatever reasons and, and, and whatever, um, you know, I'm not going to um, dismiss male-bodied women um, or women that have, you know, had their womb removed or, you know, for, for all other reasons, but our intuition is linked to our to our womb and our creative space and so mugwort as a healing plant actually is really good for regulating your periods it's um if you drink it as a tea it's 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 an amazing um period remedy i would i personally would mix it with red clover flowers i would just use the flowers i will in a minute go and get flowers that I'm drying specifically for tea um I think that's actually I'd say that's good enough um so I'm just gonna lay that down while I get my thread um so yeah mugwort if you use it as a tea I personally would mix it with red clover flowers and raspberry leaves um don't don't drink the tea if you're pregnant please don't drink the tea if you're pregnant because it can it, the reason why it helps with periods is that it helps your womb to contract. So obviously, if there's a if there's a being in your womb, you don't want it to come out early until it's it's ready. So um, yeah, don't drink this tea. Don't use this herb orally, really. If you are pregnant, um, that's a no. So um, I'm just going to show you what I do with my <laughs> with my thread. I have, um, come on, let's see, let's see. So I double it up. So I've got my little loop. And then I tie it at the bottom. So I've, I've not like researched this. I just do it how, I, how it felt comfortable to me, how my brain did it, rather than trying to teach my brain to do something else. I just let my brain do its own thing and just went, oh, this would be the best way to do it for me. So you might find a better way to tie your sticks that works for you, for your body, for your fingers, for your brain to body connection. You might be really good at knots. You might know knots and be like, Kiatara is using the wrong knot there. I would use X, Y, and Z. So you use X, Y, and Z. That's fine. I'm going to do it this way. Um, 
<laughs> I, I genuinely wholeheartedly encourage everybody to do things their way I'm just showing you how I do it so that you can build on that or adapt it to suit you you know you might not want one this big you might want a little tiny one and that's okay I'll show you in a minute how to just do it with, with these if you want um, so now I'm I'm just literally going to turn it around this way so I can I can follow it down as I t as I as I wrap it is literally just that simple I will just I've pulled that tight so I've, I've threaded it through the loop so it's like um I don't think it's a slip knot I'm sure it's got a name please feel free to correct the name that I've used on this so I doubled it over it was a loop I threaded it through and now I can pull it tight I don't know what that is but there you go and I'm just going to wrap it as I pull the, the flowers in with my hands and I'm going to go diagonally down the stem. It's that simple. Easy peasy. And then, there you go, you're not getting in very well there, are you? Not an equal. They won't all go in, and that's okay. Um, I like them to be a little bit hanky loose. Hanky loose. Um, so while I'm doing this, I'll continue on to the medic amazing medicinal properties of mugwort. Um, so yeah, the pregnancy thing, don't use it if you're pregnant, really good at regulating periods. But it's also really good as a tea for inducing sleep. Um, if you're into lucid dreaming, personally, I'm not a lucid dreamer. Like, I, it's not something that I've ever experienced um, that I'm aware of. Um, some people are really into that. If you want to maybe sit and, and figure out what what is right for you in the moment using this smudge stick and sitting in a meditation like you know whatever it is you do for meditation there are many forms of meditation you don't just have to sit there in a lotus position going on um and not thinking any thoughts um whatever it is that you like to do for meditation you, you know a bit of smudging with the mugwort can can bring on intuition it can bring on your own inner guidance it's amazing um so yeah artemis check her out like check out a story amazing fucking archetype feminine archetype she is amazing fucking so cool um and then as i get to the top so i'm probably going to cut these bits off just to make it nice and neat at the top and then i'm just gonna as the string sort of comes down i'm just gonna wrap it back around like that really really easy and then i'm just gonna tie it at the bottom i'm gonna um this is the bit where I have to concentrate now because I can never remember the right way. I go round and then I tie it under there. Right, yeah, okay. Brain to body. Um, just find a way of tying it at the bottom, basically. It's quite, it's not too difficult. It doesn't need to be mega secure, really. Um, I've kind of like, I'm just going to hold it with my knees so you can see. I've kind of like put it under um, and then I'm going to split the last bits like so and just tie them so it keeps it slightly secure um check yeah check out my artemis she's amazing and very amazing female archetype very powerful medicine woman um huntress um goddess of the moon the hunt midwives um yeah <laughs> very cool being um, so, this is what it looks like now. Um, pause video while I go and get my tray. There we go. Um, action! <laughs> um, so, don't panic, it's not going to get wasted. This is my drying tray. So this is the mugwort that I stripped from some of the plants yesterday. Um, so I stripped some of them, literally. Same with the nettles. So let's go for this. So this is standing. This is a mugwort stick, just standing in the wild, doing its thing, hi. And then I literally just would run my fingers along and, and put them in a bag, basically. Um, and then I bring them home and I put them in my drying tray. Easy peasy. Um, so I'm going to trim this off now because, you know, the, the sticks like look good when they're nice and neat. They look pretty. Um, got my clippers, my string kind of stops here, I wrapped it around the top a couple of times just to keep it, you know, literally just cut it off, like so, 
So that's nice and, and, and square. I'm going to do the same with the bottom. Um, so I've got my handle, but because it's still got flowers on it, I'm just going to use the scissors that I had to just, I mean, I could use just one of my fingers to be fair, actually. Yeah, fuck it. Um, just to pick those few flowers off, they go back in my drying tray. So then, again, not wasted at all. Um, it just makes holding the stick a lot easier. Um, makes it look a little bit nicer. Not that that really matters. If you don't, if you can't be bothered to do that, it doesn't have to look nice. <laughs> it doesn't have to be pretty. We're not here to look pretty. We're here to fucking live. <laughs> We're here to live, as is the mugwort, um, and it's done a beautiful job. I do try, I didn't mention that, I do try to only pick the flowers that have already bloomed. They've already come out, like, so you can probably see this one that I, I did cut, didn't. These haven't come out yet, if you can see, they're still quite green. But these ones have, so they've got, like, you can see the little brown tips on them that means that they've they've done their thing they've come out they've bloomed they've provided for nature for all the other life that surrounds us and um and yeah and then anything that's a little bit too hangy i'm just gonna because it's not safe <laughs> if you're gonna use it as a smudge stick and there's like loads of things hanging and they're burning it, it it's gonna be an issue so it's not like a pretty issue that is actually like a keeping your your um your, your sanctuary safe <laughs> and 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 you know sacred <laughs> um you don't want shitloads of fucking burning flowers dropping all over your house causing a fire fire risk so yeah please do be safe you know i'm all for a bit of risk taking but like there's there's, there's necessary risk and then there's un unnecessary risk that can you know it's just for risk's sake really um <laughs> yeah you just trim off the dangly flowers are a bit too risky they can go in for my tea um and obviously if i wasn't doing the video i would have done this like way quicker because i've had to focus on what i'm doing as well as talk and and you know not ignore you <laughs> um so yeah there you go that simple it's that simple that simple <clears throat> beautiful and like i said you can use smaller ones if you was to use the smaller ones like this is a nice small one here um you could probably like so take that off those can all get used up here you could layer over the smaller ones i'm just gonna show you quickly quickly layer over the smaller stick Smaller flowers. You know, because we don't all want big beastie things. Some people like little things, and that's okay. I like to do things to the extreme. Why not? You know, but not everybody's extreme, and that's okay. There's room for all of us. There's room for all of us to express our authentic selves and be the thing that we are unashamedly and unapologetically. Um, yeah. So you could do the same with this, um, and you could cut the top off, like, you know, yeah, you could cut the top off, I need new, I need new, new ones of these, they're not great, and you could cut the bottom off, right, and if you imagine that that's been tied and wrapped, that would be a little one, <laughs> a, little, a little travel one, <laughs> um, or a gift, you know. They make great gifts if you have spiritual friends that like to smudge places and, you know, and they're into gifts. Make them one of these. Make them one. Like I said, you can do the same thing with all the different plants, all the different herbs. Rosemary, apply the same logic. Sage, again, do the same thing. Maybe I'll, you know, I might do an oregano one because I don't see oregano smudge sticks for sale very often. And there are, you know, there's a lot... They, they, People tend to do what's popular, so they only make the things that are going to make the money, like which is slightly frustrating, um, because then it's, it doesn't make those things accessible to the people that are actually maybe want them, need them, desire them, etc. So I might do a video of an oregano one because that one's a little bit trickier. If I don't know if you've seen an oregano plant, um, 
but it, it's a little bit more difficult to work with and the, and the sticks are a lot thinner and, and more sparse so um, but literally now I will either hang this up somewhere that's drying like on a warm space preferably high up or I could use one of my trays um, and just put it in like that um, and just I'd put it high up I've got like a little cupboard um, it's tiny but there's um, a couple of shelves that are really high up in it so I'd put them up there um, and then it, you'll know when it's dried you'll know you'll be able to tell um, if you have a conservatory if you've been blessed with a conservatory that's a good space at the minute with fucking it's boiling it's boiling today I'm gonna have to get into the shade at some point soon um, I think I am actually sweating profusely yeah that means it's very hot <laughs> um, yeah it was that simple it was really that simple and, and again so there's the divination there's the tea sleeping um, it's good for, for dreaming good for divination good for womb 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 um, maintenance let's call it maintenance or nurturing womb nurturing if you have a womb um, you know if you are um, a female bodied man that is really struggling with, with you know with maybe periods that are just like you know I am aware that sometimes you know female bodied men really struggle with their periods they, you know it's not something that, that they want to experience and if you don't want to use like fucking contraceptive hormones to control your periods because you know that's not for you um, I highly recommend using this because it will not only lessen the amount that you bleed it will it will make them more regular so if you're having periods that are maybe like every three weeks this will um, because it's connected to the moon hopefully link up to the moon cycle so it'll be it will be every 28 days it won't be every 21 or every two, 22 um this was one of the things that helped me with my periods i did have horrific periods at one point in my life my moon time was not a pleasant time and now i really enjoy my moon times i it's not an issue it's not a problem i, I don't feel that i'm restricted at all by my moon times um it's really helped me to embrace my female form my my female um, functions if you want to call it that my female bodied functions um, you know I'm not trying to exclude anybody's gender preference here um, you know I am very aware of, of, of the gender preferences and that we need to be um, gentle sometimes when referring to, to male female it is more about the energy and, and the physical form that you come in not the the gender that you identify with um, you know if you don't identify with the way that your body comes you do still need to nurture the way that your body comes <laughs> because you know that's the way it is and some things we have to accept and some things we don't it doesn't mean that you can't identify with being a man right male um and still look after the female body that you have right now um so yeah you can make a little travel one they make great gifts it means that you don't have to spend money on etsy uh, looking for these you can make them yourselves it does really connect you with the plant and um, you can dry the flowers um, and make them into a tea when these are fully dried put them in like a kilner jar or if you don't have the money to buy a kilner jar you can recycle a fucking coffee jar it's that simple like if you buy coffee in big jars clean it out properly make sure it's dried stick it in the sun so it's 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 been you know, cleansed and, and sterilised, you know, use hot water, make sure it's fully dry, obviously, before you put the dry flowers in. And it'll last for years in a jar, as long as they've been fully dried. I like to kind of leave them outside a little bit just to let the bugs escape and go back on their merry mission. <laughs> their merry mission. Um, and then take them into the house to dry. Um, you know, because I know not everybody appreciates bugs in their house. I'm not that bothered, really. It's our space. It's not my space. Um, unless you're dangerous, then you can get out of my space, because that's, you know, that's okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, really, please do consider mugwort. It's a very underrated herb. You can actually even use the leaves as a pot herb. Like, if you want to make, like, a stew or a broth, um, the leaves... Uh, you know, traditionally and, and long ago when people used all the leaves to, to make a broth, a soup, yeah, they would have used the mugwort leaves as a, as a, as a flavouring. Um, yeah, it's a very tasty herb. It tastes very nice. 
And I think that's it. I'm just trying to remember if I've if I've left anything out. I don't think I have. Um, I will put some links into the mugwort plant. There's some nice foraging websites. You know, as always, do your own research, please. I advocate that everybody empowers themselves with their own knowledge in their own way, because not all knowledge comes in a form that's accessible to us in the way that we learn. Um, the I think the video that I did do shows you the plant i did show you the plant in its full form so you can identify it once you've learned how to identify it it's so easy to spot you'll be like oh mugwort mugwort you will realize just how abundantly and freely mugwort grows everywhere on wastelands by rivers in like wild gardens where people have left like little like sort of spare bits to grow wild nature reserves you know um some people are a bit funny about taking as long as you're careful i mean the land is, is for everybody. Gaia shouldn't be sectioned off for specific people to use. If we were all doing this and living in harmony with our environment, there wouldn't be a need for fucking nature reserves because it would all be embraced and looked after and nurtured and cared for and we would be living in harmony with it instead of against it. Um, so, you know, please don't feel bad about taking some. As long as you're respectful and you recognise that if, you know, there's one, don't pick. If it's, you know, if it's in a certain... You know, if it looks stressed, don't pick it. Obviously, if there's only if there's only a few, don't pick from that patch. Um, if it hasn't yet, sometimes you know, if it hasn't yet flowered and done its thing, don't don't take from that. Um, and I think that's it. It's trying to be as educational, as informative as possible, but I do kind of get a bit lost in my own thoughts and appreciation of, of things. Um, and I hope this has inspired you and shown you just how easy it is to do your own thing. Um, you know, if you was to make one of these this big, it'd probably last you all year. You only have to do a little shoo 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 shoo. And um, yeah, and you put it out, use it for next time. And there you go. Have a blessed day. Um, I hope you enjoy making your own smudge stick. Um, it's very empowering it's very um it's you know it's economical it, it you know we can all do these things some people always oh you should sell them you should you should have a shop and do but that would mean that i'd make it into like a into a thing and i don't want to make it into a thing i want to do it because i want to not because i feel like i have to make money from it i'd rather show people how to do their own and then you don't have to buy from other people and then you know and then hopefully we can step forward into a, a money free world where all skills are valued and and not you know they don't have a monetary value on them because not everyone has access to money or funds and financial physical 3d financial things gaia is abundant and she, you know she provides <laughs> um just remember to say thank you remember to be appreciative and grateful for the abundance and for what you've been gifted and 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 that's it that is it. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing this time and energy space with me. I'm really grateful to all the beautiful comments that people have been leaving lately and all the people that have been, you know, receiving me in the way that I intend to be received and for your subscribes and your likes and all that thing that people do. And um, yeah, just for joining me in, in my, my existence, just for sharing existence with me. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, for showing an interest in Gaia. She does like it when we show an interest in her. She is a being in her own right. Um, and she does like to be acknowledged as we all do. So, yeah, thank you. I'm so grateful. And so is Gaia. So is the Mugwort. <laughs> yeah, enjoy. Enjoy your day. Please try to find the blessings and the tiny things. It makes the day go so much better. With gratitude comes opportunity. I read that on a tea bag, and I, I, <laughs> it was one of the best bits of advice I've ever been given. With gratitude comes opportunity. So yeah, tea bags. Who knew? <laughs> I love you.